the Chase Thomas Podcast. For people who have nothing but time to kill. Falcons win 10 or more games. And he's betting that they win eight or less. Mm. And nine's a push. So That's why you're on the podcast and your roommate's not. That's right. Exactly. Get that guy out of here. <laughs> Tell him I said that. Get that guy out right. of here. We'll do. Um, well, we have a lot to parse through here. Um, now, I'm glad we don't do these right after because I would just get kicked off YouTube if we did a live <laughs> reaction show from any Tennessee football game. It just it wouldn't work. It would just be the end of my uh, career covering uh, the vaults here locally. Um, build a lot of enemies very quickly. So we're not going to do that. Uh, that's never going to happen. Uh, I need to sleep on it. I need to take a walk, touch some grass, find some morning dew out there before I hop on the uh, hop on the old podcast here. But we're going to talk about what ultimately happened. And now that it's been 24 hours, your biggest takeaway that you're still thinking about from the Vols Austin P game last night, Ryan, was what? Uh, not just how bad Tennessee's passing offense was. I, I think mm. that's the obvious one. If Tennessee's passing offense was much better, I don't think you're really talking about uh, any of those things, you know, panicky things or worrying things about Tennessee's offense. And, uh, you know, I guess just uh, get the conversation started on it. Uh, I thought, you know, going back and watching the replays of some of those plays today and not just seeing it from the press box, uh, I thought more of those drops that were not great throws were more inexplicable drops than I thought at, at the time. Um, and that doesn't mean Joe Milton was great. Again, uh, I think I said this in our text thread last night when we were discussing the play. Poor play to receivers, but yeah, even when receivers play bad, when you abandon throwing the ball past the line of scrimmage in the second quarter against the FCS team, the quarterback's not playing well, too. So mm. there was blame to go around. Um, but, yeah, certainly the passing offense and its failures was, to me, by far the story of the game. Yeah, that's the story. Easy. Um, just the fact that there was no downfield passing at all. Joe Milton continues to struggle with that you know, 15 to 20 yard range, especially on crossing routes going across the field. And, you know, that's something Hinda did really well in. And I don't know, it just, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth when Joe Milton can't make those throws. Yes, the receivers had a bad game, but I do have more long-term worry about Milton and his inability to hit those throws consistently and to make accurate passes than I am the receivers just having a bad day all around. It's also weird that I'm seeing a lot of like, hey, remember at Pitt last year, the offense looked shaky and we were all panicking. I'm like, that's not the same. They were still cooking late. They still found their gear. Yeah. Cedric Tillman was still unguardable in that game. You felt good about where Cedric Tillman was and just like the safety valve there. Like, I think it's a little bit different context and also a much better team in Pitt than Austin. On the road. Yeah. On the road too. That's another part of it. I just, I don't think that's a fair comp to be like, look, we, we struggled out of the gate and I mean, I don't know. Do you think it's a fair comp that Tennessee in the first three years of Hypel has seemingly kind of always been a slow starter? Maybe that's we have to re readjust how we look at this team that they kind of need a couple weeks, couple games before they get rolling on and clicking on all cylinders. Is that possible? Maybe. Um, I, I've kind of thrown the first year out of the window because the quarterback change. So yeah. it's hard to, you know, talk about that year compared to the other two. But last was there year, anybody in common with that first year in the quarterback now? <laughs> I don't know if it if it got thrown to me first, I was going to say, well, it might just be the Joe Milton Joe Milton thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, last year I wouldn't really say they started slow. They they hung fifty nine on Ball State and mm -hmm. it was better than Austin P, I think. And then yep, um, you know, scored fine against Pitt and then obliterated Akron. So no, I wouldn't really buy into that as being a, a theme you see from hypo offenses. But another reason I just love Tennessee fans, it's like, well, we didn't run through the T like yeah. <laughs> everything. Actually, I, I yeah, love that. That's a college football thing where it's like, look, everything got everything after that. You got to throw it out the window. We weren't able to r run through the T like everything was different. We're wearing gray uniforms. <laughs> there was lightning. There was all, all kinds of uh, the, a sea of issues here. I don't know. I think my strongest takeaway is I don't know what Tennessee like when I don't know what they can do to get this rolling mid season in terms of the offensive flow, because the problem that you're going to see is that Jalen Wright is clearly the best player on this offense. Like he's now still averaging basically 10 yards a carry through two weeks. Um, yeah. Dylan Sampson gets significantly less carries this week. I don't really know why that was the case, but um, 
Jalen, the the offense, Ryan, you spoke to this last week, was just like the it, this year has to be a run to set up the pass. And a lot of people are talking about like they're in quarters a lot. And Tennessee and I mean, Austin P and Virginia both took away the deep ball and they're just sending a lot of people back. Like what happens in the SEC? Are they going to play the same way or are they those deep shots going to open up more because teams are going to load up the box and they're not going to give Tennessee and Jalen Wright those lanes up front? I just... I just wonder what kind of deep rhythm and kind of passing rhythm this team can get in when it's clear the emphasis should be on Jalen Wright, Dylan Sampson, and Jabari Small because I think that's just how this team is going to win the majority of their football games this year is relying on that trio. And I mean, Joe even spoke to it. It's like we have a three-headed monster back there. But I think I just I think that's my strongest takeaway is that like if that's the case through two weeks and especially here last night. How does that change how this offense and how the passing game is going to go? Because everyone's like, how do we get in sync? How do we get in rhythm? Can you get in rhythm similar to what it was a year ago if you're a run first team and you're not getting those same opportunities that you had last year? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that's a crazy narrative to think you, not that you're going to pass the ball with the same effectiveness and efficiency maybe that you did last year, but to think your passing game can't get into a rhythm just because you're a run first, uh, I think is completely misguided. And you talk about, Teams taking away the deep stuff, you know, to quote Josh Heupel, there was stuff over the middle, mm. wide open. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, there's stuff, you, those throws you got to make. And it goes back to something I talked about in the offseason that all those defensive coordinators last year talking about Tennessee or head coaches either saying, you know, you just got to take away the big play, get set, mm. don't let them, the coverage breaks. Well, that didn't work against Tennessee last year because they were so good in the short passing and the intermediate passing and the running football. This year, uh, if you do that and you take away a deep shot, can Joe Milton beat you with other, you know, take a Rick Barnes analogy. Can he beat you with the putter? Can he beat you with the wedge? Does he have the different clubs in his bag to beat you? And through two weeks, he has not uh, in Tennessee's run game. and has some effectiveness. Um, but I don't necessarily think that just because they're leaning on the run game, I guess to go back to your original question, uh, that means you, you can't get into a rhythm passing the ball, uh, especially. Well, what I'm saying is not that you can't, I'm just saying that like, I think they just have to go away from their bread and butter more. Do you get what I'm saying? Where like last year they didn't feel like they had to. This year for them to get rolling through in their passing game, they just need more reps and they need to run less. Uh, that's just part of what I'm saying. It's like I don't know if that's just overthinking it, but like they need to rut pass to set up the run more to get in that kind of rhythm they had a year ago, and it takes away the best player they have in the office. Does it, does that make sense, or am I overthinking it? I think you're overthinking it. Personally. Okay, I'll let I, I'll let Jack give his feedback, but that's my take. No, I think you're overthinking it too. And, you know, just, yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about how <laughs> if Tennessee is just a running team, that means they can't get offensive rhythm that I'm not really going to entertain that. But I, I will entertain just the fact that Tennessee needs to run the ball a lot more. And I do think that when they're in games that they could actually lose, because even though it was six to six with a minute and 30 left in the first half, no one ever thought Tennessee was going to lose to Austin Peay. And no mm -hmm. one for a second thought they had any threat of losing to Virginia. So when Tennessee is in these games, such as maybe Florida or potentially even UTSA or definitely A&M down the road that Tennessee could lose, are we going to see them just can lean on their playmakers more? And the best playmakers on this offense are the running backs. I think the answer is yes, because when mm. it comes down to it, you're not going to try and get too cute and then lose games. I don't think Heupel, you know, I think Heupel is too smart for that. So I feel like we'll see more and more right and small as Tennessee's schedule gets tougher. I like it. Um, Jack, more to blame last night. The wide receivers or Joe Milton? Who do you place more of the blame for the offensive struggles on? I think uh, just in terms of last night, the wide receivers, because there was never any outside of the Brew McCoy uh, should have been touchdown. That one was just a really bad throw from Joe Milton. But the others were bad throws, but it wasn't egregious. And I thought some of those drops specifically, you know, Brews on the first play, McCallum had a bad drop. Of course, the Dante Thornton play that would have been six. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I, I place more of the blame on the pass catchers there. But like I said earlier in the podcast, a more long term worry about Joe's inability to make good throws there and to.